Knee pain, is it stopping your training or even limiting the progress that you're making? Is it making you frustrated, making you scream? And it's not coming about necessarily from your outdoor bike. No, it's when you're training indoors, you're noticing it more. Well, in this little video, I'm gonna do a little workout. <laughs> and I'm gonna share with you a couple of little tips that people fall foul of. They forget that when they're indoors, you're not moving around as much. But there's a couple of common links that people get wrong when they're training indoors and they forget. So let's clunk click, let the old coach warm up and I'll be with you in a second. Run the intro. Okay, you're probably wondering why the green screen's up. Don't worry, I'm just getting ready to do a live workout on YouTube. You can join in. They're every Wednesday at seven o'clock GMT. Not only do I do workouts, but I will be sharing bike fit tips in all of the workouts. Now, this is the last little bike fit basic drills we're gonna do in the home studio because I'm back in my bike fit studio now. So I've got some exciting stuff to share with you and some live videos of some live fits as well. That'll be fun. Okay, so let's get back to knee issue. Now, you know from your cycling experience, whether you're beginner or in advanced, you can Google and find there's four main areas that give us that pain. The front of the knee, usually the patella tendon can become inflamed generally associated with the saddle too low so there's too much quadricep pressure through that patella tendon back of the knee or the insertion of the hamstring generally associated with the saddle too high so there's a lot of pressure on the insertion pain on the outside this lateral region normally from saddle height issues and a bit of stability through your ass and your foot and then internal knee pain which again a little bit of saddle height issue but more linked to stability normally I find through the cleat placement or the shoe type that we've got and then high cadence drills. Okay, so let's fix them all with a couple of changes that you may not find on the internet. So first thing, when you were indoors, you've got to understand, and hey, maybe this is you. You are working harder. You're working over shorter periods. Yeah, you, 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 you become bored. So no matter how much you spend on the juggling clowns and the unicorns, no, no, sorry, that's just me. Maybe you've just got music and some form of <laughs> video to watch, but you get bored. So you go harder than what you should do. Now you're not necessarily loading up the knee, but you're loading up the quadricep. And what's that doing? Unless it gets a little bit of love and attention and maintenance after, you're in trouble. Come on, if you're on an outdoor ride, surely at least once a week, you're gonna wash down your bike. If you do an indoor session, you're at least gonna wipe the sweat off it after that workout. I'm guaranteed, surely you're gonna wash your clothing here. You may even dry out your shoes. But what are you doing to your muscles, joints, ligaments, tendons? Sure, you've got your expensive protein shake and your off the shelf nutrition that you don't really need to pay for but what are you doing for your body? The most important thing when all of this is dialed down to nothing, your body needs to be loved. So if the quadricep has been worked a lot and we're doing a lot of power efforts, pop your saddle up a little bit higher. Pop it five millimeters higher than you are on your road bike outdoors because your hip is gonna be closer to the bottom bracket. So you've shortened that distance already allow the pelvis to roll off the front, really get into that power position, and therefore you will protect the quadricep a little bit more, which will protect the knee. Now, there's a couple of other things going on though. You need to get into a program of stretches, okay? So I'll show you a few basic ones that we can do, but you've got to understand that if the quadricep becomes tighter, overloaded, it doesn't switch off, you start to get IT band tightness, normally, in one leg. One quadricep feels a little bit more fatigued than the other. What is happening is these muscles will pull because remember the quadricep's job is to straighten the leg. So they will pull on your knee and that beautiful vertical tracking of the knee is gone. And what will happen is your knee will track outwards and this will cause the joint to really start to grate through the cartilage. Now, I'm nearly 52 years old, so my cartilage is a lot thinner than it was when I'm 18, yeah? Now, cycling is low impact, but it's still impact. And the bigger and harder your ass and legs are through that knee, the bigger the impact. So, if it's tracking slightly out, no matter what you do to that saddle height, you're going to have this continual issue. So we need to fix that by just a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of 
trigger point treatment, a little bit of foam rolling stretching. Okay, let's break away from the bike just for a second and dive into some quadriceps stretches. Now you don't have to get that advanced. Now I would have every rider on a program of stability through their foot and their hip and stretches through hamstring, quadricep, hip flexor. Every day, twice a day even, if you wanna ride your bike, you have gotta look after your body. But what I do, finish a workout, come down onto the mat, Heels into my, into my butt, and I just stretch out the quad. Now for me, there is an issue on the right hand side, old injuries, etc. but there's a little bit of asymmetric movement through the saddle, so I'm aware of that. So when I stretch, wow, I feel it more on the right hand side. But this little stretch is just giving me that little bit of relief. Now, I'll get my foam rollers, I'll do lots of other recovery, and you can do that as well. But just a nice, simple, and then I can make it deeper. And then from there, I'll just go straight into stretching out that hip flexor and making sure that I'm paying attention to the areas that I know for me are a problem. But I assure you, if you look after the flexibility and the maintenance of your quadricep muscle and your hamstring muscle, then you will see a great improvement in that knee issue. Come on, you gotta do the work. It's worth the go, isn't it? Right, let's get back on the bike and I'll finish off the chat about what you need to do when working indoors. Okay, now the next thing is indoors, what about your Q factor? Now that Q factor is where our feet interact with our pedals, the distance. On the watt bike, I am a lot wider than I am on my road bike. I've got a narrow pelvis, so I need a narrow Q factor. So I do not spend a long time on my indoor bike. One of the telltale signs, no matter how much you do with your saddle, you will always feel a little bit of discomfort, but it's the Q factor. Now, why not set up a video? Set up the tracking of your feet and your knees and look at the way that it's interacting. Now, if it is a Q factor issue and you have an indoor bike specific like this, like a watt bike, then what I would suggest is keep your workouts short. Don't be doing too long a workout. And I'm talking about short, maybe 45 minutes, around about there, and you should be okay. But remember that when you come off, you're going to have to do some flexibility and stretching exercises. Now, the next tip is, what are you wearing on your feet? Are you one of these people that's doing a lot of your indoor workouts and your older shoes, your cleats have maybe deteriorating, but hey, you're indoors, nobody's gonna see you, and you're getting covered in sweat anyway. That is a bad habit to get into because the interaction of your foot, cleat, and pedal has a huge bearing on the health of your knee. Because of the tiny little uh, muscles and there's, there's tiny little intricacies inside the knee without making it complex that are trying to stabilize your knee. So remember, your foot is trying to stabilize the knee as well. And if that cleat has too much float, you've released the tension on your pedal, you've got an old pair of shoes that your foot's moving around in, I'm telling you, that knee is gonna become fatigued very, very quickly and that stability that it has will be limited and that could be causing you an issue. So what I'm saying is don't put on the old padding. Don't put on the old shoes. If they get to a point where they are worn through, come on, replace them. It's far more beneficial to spend less on your protein shakes and save up for a new pair of shoes. Shoes that actually fit you. Cleat placement that works with you, okay? So start by moving your cleat all the way back. Okay, you may have a bike that that may cause toe crossover, but you're indoors, okay? If you have a specific bike for indoors, that's not a problem, is it? But stabilize the foot and then experiment with that higher saddle, the stretching, and hey, that knee pain will start to go. I promise you, it does work. Okay, I gotta get ready for the live session. So we gotta flip the bike around, get the warm up going, and then get sweaty. Hey, if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel. If you've not subscribed, hey, give it a thought. You know, if the channel's something that you find interesting, engaging, then I'll see you at the party in the next video. But in the meantime, you stay safe, keep smiling, keep spinning. I'll see you from the Bike Fit Studio for some sexy Bike Fit videos. Right, I'll just finish my little warm up before I jump onto the live. You take care, stay safe.